Former President George W. Bush made a statement about the ongoing racism problem. He said, It remains a shocking failure that many African Americans, especially young African American men, are harassed and threatened in their own country. It is a strength when protesters protected by responsible law enforcement march for a better future. This tragedy and a long series of similar tragedies raise a long overdue question how do we end systemic racism in our society? Now, this is the civil rights attorney, John Bryan. He's out of West Virginia. I've covered a couple of his videos. Well, apparently, in John's earlier days as becoming a lawyer, he was on a committee that actually dealt with the systemic race problem when George W. Bush was in office. And according to John, old George W. didn't really do any justice for the cause. John put this up on his Facebook uh, channel or page, and after I sat and listened to it all, I mean, it's a little lengthy, but it's good. He's a smart guy. He's a good guy, and he's actually an attorney who works for the people. He don't work for the money. He knows the money's there, <clears throat> but I really honestly think he could care less. I mean, as long, I think he would rather solve a case or win in court and do somebody good for the better of their future than he would to bank in. I mean, everybody needs money to survive. That's the world we live in. But I'm going to go ahead and roll the video since it's a little long and just listen to what John has to say. I'll put the links to all his info and contact in the description. Thanks, guys. So it seems that everybody's up in arms about what happened in Minnesota, especially here in West Virginia. Well, here's my question to you. Um, for all your virtue signaling now in 2020, where have you been for the past, oh, 14 years or so that I've been taking on the issue of police misconduct in West Virginia, which of course is where I live. But I get calls from all over the country. Take a look at this. This is a video I took secretly with my phone about 14 months ago in a hospital in Huntington, West Virginia. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? This is my client, James Dean, breathing some of the last breaths of his life. Actually, a machine is breathing for him, and that's his elderly mother bending over him, trying to talk to him, saying, James, James, can you hear me? What you can't see in the video is that right behind are the nurses who are pressuring and even the brain surgeons were pressuring this elderly lady to pull the plug on her son. And before she makes a decision, she's desperately trying to talk to him. I couldn't get anybody to care. That was 14 months ago. In fact, the nurses in the hospital wouldn't even let me take pictures or a video. Here a man is dying in the hospital. He had trauma to his brain, a crushed skull, a brain bleed, had to have a craniotomy. This occurred while he was being arrested by police in West Virginia. Nobody cared. I wasn't allowed to even take pictures of the guy, of my client. No police would show up. I called the FBI. I called the local police. Finally, I got a state trooper to talk to me. He said he was going to investigate. That was 14 months ago. The medical record said that he suffered brain trauma, or excuse me, skull trauma as a result of trauma to his head. It happened while he was handcuffed, being arrested. Somehow his head impacted the floor while he was being arrested. Police brought him to the hospital. It was all fun and games until he went unconscious. And all of a sudden he wasn't in custody anymore. Police leave. Next day, the brain surgeon finds a telephone number for his elderly mother and calls and says, um, I, I think I just operated on your son. I just performed a craniotomy. And she says, no, that can't be. He said, oh yeah, James Dean. And she, he gave the age and so forth. And that's how his elderly mother that you see in the video found out that her son was in a coma. 
Nobody cared. I posted on social media. It was in the news. I was able to bring a Charleston Gazette uh, reporter into the room with me. He was basically posing as a lawyer. It was the only way we were able to get in there. Again, not allowed to take any pictures. Police wouldn't show up. You want to know the worst thing of all? Now we're 14 months after the fact. And the West Virginia Medical Examiner's Office still has not found a cause of death. Despite the fact that the brain surgeons said absolutely it was trauma to, to his skull that caused the brain bleed. The West Virginia Medical's Office, Examiner's Office, could not figure out just how this guy died. They were hoping to find some other cause to relieve law enforcement of liability. Either that or they're trying to delay the filing of a lawsuit to try to see if we missed the statute of limitations. At least in my opinion, that's what it seems like they're doing. Or maybe they're just really incompetent. So let me, let me see, do you care about this? Do you care about James Dean like you care about a guy you never met several states away just because of the color of his skin? Why don't you protest, call the governor, and see why don't they help this poor lady? Why don't they release the medical examiner's report so this family can pursue justice? Or are they just trying to stop me and old John Bryan from filing a lawsuit against the police? And that's the whole thing. For the past 14 years that I've been doing this in West Virginia, nobody cared. These people can't get anyone to talk to them. They can't get a lawyer to talk to them. They can't get the police to talk to them. You can't, you can't get an independent investigation in West Virginia. You want to fix a problem? I can fix it tomorrow. If you really want to fix it, you appoint some sort of government oversee, overseer, some sort of agency within the state that's unbiased and unconnected to investigate these claims. You can't allow someone to investigate themselves. That's ridiculous. You see, with the military, we have civilians running it. We have a civilian secretary of defense. We have a civilian president. They are in control of the military by design with our constitution. We don't, we didn't allow for a military to be in charge of itself. But yet we do the same thing with police. For instance, in West Virginia, the West Virginia state police refer to themselves as a paramilitary organization. They assign rank and, and, and so forth, and that's fine. But they're also the ones that investigate themselves. Have I, have I ever seen so far in my career an, an actual unbiased independent investigation? I don't recall that I have. And that's just the state police. Um, I mean, you have all these smaller agencies, the county sheriff's departments and, the, and municipalities. I mean, they don't, they don't have any mechanism for some sort of um, internal review. Yeah, yeah, we, we, you know, we, we reviewed it. I mean, that's it. That's pretty much, that's pretty much all there is. I mean, you don't really care about stopping, you know, police abuse of power, police misconduct, um, if you don't want an unbiased independent investigation. I mean, why hasn't anyone proposed that? I mean, that is literally the one thing that's, that's going to stop this. It's like lawyers. Sure, there's bad lawyers, just like there's bad cops and bad doctors. But you know what? When doctors screw up, when lawyers screw up, always hanging over their head is that disciplinary committee. And in our case, the Office, office of Disciplinary Council and the West Virginia Supreme Court that can discipline us, that can disbar us, suspend us, that, that can take action. And they review every complaint, every stupid little complaint. They will review. And they do. But you don't have that mechanism for an entire profession that has the ability to kill you. And lawyers generally not, are not allowed to do that. Doctors may do that. Lawyers can't do that. So we have an entire lack, a culture of lack of accountability. And, and not just here. I mean, it's way worse elsewhere. West Virginia is one of the reasons I came here is because, you know, unlike where I grew up, you don't get harassed by police generally. I mean, you, you just don't. There's not enough of them. Um, I mean, where I grew up, I mean, hell, they're looking for something to do. Or they were when I was young. Uh, when I went to college, you know, they were, oh, man, the campus police riding around on their bicycles in their short shorts. 
I mean, they, they were looking to raid a fraternity house with their silenced MP5s and their SWAT team uniforms. They had nothing else to do. I actually watched them give a DUI to a friend of mine as we were on our way home from the library. He said, let me blow, let me blow. They said, no, we'll take you to the station. Eventually, after they arrested him, he blew a 0, 0.00. The funny thing is, is this kid was the son of the head of, I think it was the DEA, or maybe it was a border patrol. I don't know. But I mean, it was just, it was seeing stuff like that that brought me into what I do. And so after, hell, 14 years of this here, and, and after working at the Department of Justice during the Bush administration, that's another thing. Say, when I was there, 2004, George Bush came out today and he wanted to criticize us as a country. Well, you know what? I was working at the United States Department of Justice in Washington, D.C. when he was president. And I was actually working for the one unit of the Civil Rights Division of the DOJ that investigates pattern or practice police misconduct. For instance, racism, racial profiling. You want to know how many people um, George Bush had working on this through the whole country? Two. Two plus me, three. Three people. And now he's going to come out as if he's had nothing to do with the situation. Well, hell, he was president for eight years. So if you really want to affect change, contact your governor, contact your legislature, have them contact me. I know exactly what to do. I could fix the problem in no time. I suspect there, there's a lot of people who would disagree with that and try to stop me. But that's where you're going to affect change. I mean, it's not going to be in raiding Louis Vuitton stores or Nikes, Nike stores. I mean, that's just going to make the problem worse. I mean, you do something like that, what are you going to get? You're going to get more police. You're going to get harsher treatment by police. It is a problem, but in my opinion, it, it, there's no systemic uh, racial uh, component to it. Because West Virginia, mostly the cops are mostly dealing with white people. It's happening to white people more than it is to black people in West Virginia. And I've represented both. You know what? Speaking of 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 of, uh, of of black clients, I represented several black clients who were beaten by a state police trooper in racial terms, uh, under racial terms. And nobody cared. Hell, it was in the news. It was on social media. No one really cared. And I followed through and I got I, I, I got a decent settlement for the men, but that's all I can do is get money. Um, and there were more than one of those cases. And that guy's not now no longer a police officer, to my knowledge. He was he was uh, he's no longer a state trooper. Um, I mean, how about when I represented a gay man who got beaten by police up in Parkersburg, West Virginia, and they called him, you know, the F word as they punched him in the nose. It was on the front page of the Charleston Gazette. Who cared then? Who was it fighting? Was that was anyone marching? No, no, it was it was just it was just me one other lawyer in that case seeking justice for the person and if you really want to affect change you've got to have some sort of accountability you have to have independent accountability and you know if you want to march for something here in West Virginia march for James Dean will you not march for him because of his skin color march for his mother will you not march for her because of her skin color because if you won't, then everything you're doing is meaningless. It's just to make yourself feel good. So I challenge you, you wanna help? I can show you all sorts of instances of, of outrageous conduct by police or other government employees in West Virginia. You wanna do something about it? Let's do something about it. One thing I realized that I, forgot to in include in this little video is that I don't blame individual police officers for all of the stuff that's going on. And if, if I look like I have uh, puffy lips, it's not because I'm hoarding nuts for, for next winter. I actually have an, an abscess that's coming back in, in my face um, as if 2020 was bad enough already. In any event, you have to realize that these, this situation was set in motion decades ago 
with our politicians in our Supreme Court, such as the Warren Court, which decided that we were going to become this police state. And, you know, we have to reflect on that and, and look at what we can do to change it. We can't blame the individual police officers for for the, the problem that we have, as a society has created. So, you know, we have to judge individual conduct um, by individual conduct. Everything's a factual analysis. If you're involved in a self-defense shooting, you don't want to be judged based on anyone else's conduct but your own. Same thing here. That's all I wanted to say.